Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about uh, the question we often face while measuring or presenting the data related to particle size. Specifically, when we determine or characterize nanoparticles by the dynamic light scattering. And the question comes that which is the correct size? The intensity, volume, number, or G average. So in this talk, we are going to discuss that which is the correct size and which one to choose and why. So let's understand what is dynamic light scattering. As you can see in this picture, dynamic light scattering is a technique to determine the particle size distribution of the particles suspended in the liquid medium. And you can see that, that there are green dots which represents as particle and the blue lines, which basically dotted lines, which represents as a solvent. And specifically, when we talk about the particles here, specifically, we are talking about nanoparticles, which is having physical size between 1 and 100 nanometer, at least at one dimension. We measure their size distribution in the solvent to check their stability, to check their interaction, to check their self life, etc. In most typical dynamic light scattering equipments, there is a monochromatic light source in form of laser having around 632 nanometers. That's typical uh, uh, laser power source. What happened when the laser light source hit the particles? Uh, they scatter the light in all direction. That is called Rayleigh scattering. So as long as particles are small compared to the wavelength, it basically this is a powerful or useful technique to determine the particle size distribution. Even if the light source is a laser and it is monochromatic and coherent, the scattering intensity can fluctuate over the period of time. And this fluctuation is due to the particles which are suspended in the solvent, they undergo the Brownian motion and the distance between the scatterers in the solvent is constantly changing over the period of time. So the real question, which is the correct size, intensity or volume or number? So the number distribution, uh, question comes that what is number distribution? So the number distribution shows the number of particles in different size beans. Let's say like you have uh, the graph you are seeing, it has certain beans, right? The red uh, bars are in red color. So in particular size bean, what is the number of particles of different sizes are there? Similarly, like volume distribution, which shows the total volume of particles. So one is talking about total number of particles in a particular size bin. Another one is talking about the total volume of those particles in that particular size bins. And then the intensity distribution, which describe the how much light is scattered by the particles in the different size bins. Okay. And if we take the data here, uh, which basically cause the confusion, that if you talk about a mean and the width, here the width means like standard deviation. If you take the intensity of the same particles, so all three, just to make it clear and ensure that all the data presented here of the same sample. So the same sample showing the intensity of around 87 nanometer with a width of 32. You can see the width means like the the standard deviation, the how broad the graph is. Volume, which shows 65 nanometer with 25 nanometer width. And number shows 50 nanometer with 14 nanometer width. So now the question comes that the same particle, but we are having three different sizes. So which size to choose, right? So we will understand in the following slides that which is the correct 
uh, size to choose y and when okay and uh, the question comes that are these three distributions are different yes they are of course because they are for the different means how different they are why their size trends because intensity is much bigger volume is than and followed by number in terms of size uh, increasing or reducing so let's take an example and consider the distribution consisting of just two different particle size. Don't worry about this equation and maths. I'm just putting this as an example to explain that why we have to choose a particular parameter in a particular situation. So let's consider that there are two particles of different size. One size is an A, another size is an B. Okay. And the N A having a particular size A maybe or B and B must having a particle size B. Okay. And here there's then one assumption that particles are spherical. And the percent of N A is the relative number of the particle with the size A. And, and if there's in percent of N B, then it will show the relative number of the particle in the size B, okay? If we compare the same with volume distribution, so now comes that a particular size of particles is what is their volume in a particular size bean, okay? A and B, you can consider here is a different size beans. So here the percent VA is talking about the relative volume of the particle size A, and then N, A, and B are again the same uh, particle of like different size A and B. And here are two assumption comes. One is particles are spherical. Another is particle volume is proportional to the size to the third power. Okay, now you can see that the A has the power three. Okay, N, A, A, three, B, B, three, because there's a proportion of the size three because of its volume, okay? And then the third, the intensity distribution. Intensity distribution, here again, the, the assumption is particle is spherical, but the percent IA is talking about the relative amount of the intensity, okay? Intensity is scattered from the particles with that particular size. So, if you see the formula, all the formula are the same, but there's a difference in the volume that there's in proportional to the size of the third power, whereas in the intensity, the particle intensity is proportional to the size of the sixth power. So probably you are getting the guess here that why I'm getting bigger size in the intensity, relatively lesser in volume and even lesser in the number, right? Because of its third power and sixth power. But in what conditions we should uh, not use number, in what conditions we should consider intensity and volume. So for the particles that are much smaller than the wavelength of the illuminating light, typically 632.8 nanometer in the zeta size and nano. Here I'm giving you an example of an instrument which has a particular a laser light of that strength and which is like most equipment has this power of laser then intensity distribution focuses on the larger particles in the distribution okay it doesn't talk about how many particles are there. it talks about the scattered light at and then the sixth power of that that size being okay so that emphasize on the larger particles in the distribution Whereas the number distribution, it emphasizes on the smaller particle in the distribution. Let's say you have 98% particles of certain size and 1% particle of certain size, then in number distribution will emphasize more on the smaller size comparatively. Whereas intensity, even the 98% is smaller, but even 2% is bigger, it might focus on those two because it emphasizes accordingly. 
So it is important to note that both are just a different representation of the same physical reality of a distribution of different size. Okay, let's discuss in the following slide that which one is correct uh, for your situation, for your measurement. Then you might have a uh, question that when the volume distribution is more preferred or most preferred. It is most preferred when we are, uh, when our aim of measurement of the mass distribution. Let's say I have a, a one nanogram of particles and I want to measure their nanoparticle size. So I want to tell my customer or tell my scientific peers that uh, how many nanograms of having X particle size, right? So in that case, we use volume distribution is most preferred. And typically these are uh, used because we have to measure the mass. So we measure the mass using some coupled detector uh, and coupled another techniques because we know that uh, dynamic light scattering can only tell the size distribution of the particles without seeing the particles, without measuring the quantity of the particles, that how many in terms of mass, right? So we cross check or correlate with other techniques which has UV or RI detector like refractive index and ultra visible light detector uh, with chromatography that detect the concentration of the materials. And that concentration we can correlate uh, the data that we have obtained from the dynamic light scattering or DLS which can really tell us that how volume distribution is useful. And this volume distribution from the light scattering can be compared the best with this chromatography data. Remember that when we obtain the data from any technique, which only gives us based on certain assumption, then we have to cross check the data from the other techniques that the data we are getting is correlative or the comparative, or actually they, they represent the real information of that particle, right? So that's why this says that compare the best with UV and RI chromatographic data if you are considering the volume distribution. Then there is an another parameter or the, uh, the, the, the in the table which you get from get on the DLS software, you might also see the G average. So the G average is obtained from the analysis of scattering intensity and is only defined for the intensity. So the G average is most correlated with the intensity distribution data uh, in the TLS. And it is because it is weighted mean hydrodynamic size of uh, ensemble collection of particles measured by the DLS. The G average is derived from the cumulant analysis. Okay, there's a cumulant analysis, it is important to note that. And that uh, analysis of the measured the correlative curve. Uh, and there are an assumption that the that the single particle size, there is a single exponential fit is applied to the autocorrelation function. So this is related to the software like autocorrelation function uh, for that DLS. But this is largely for your understanding that it is defined based on the intensity and considering the single particle size. So the question again, back here, which is the correct size for me, intensity, volume, or number, or G average, which I have four different uh, data, four different graphs, which one should I use to report to my regulatory authority, to my scientific journal, or to my boss, or to my peers, right? So, all four are correct. All the four are correct as long as it is clearly stated how the size was obtained and what distribution representation was considered. Okay. So now you might have reviewed some of my paper or read my paper or sometime in my presentation you have or in others presentation as well you might have seen that number distribution is often presented on those papers. But you have also seen that wherever that DLS data is given, 
that size is also correlated with some other techniques in those research papers or most of those peer reviewed research articles right whether the size is uh, cross determined by the x ray diffraction or the size is correlated with the electron microscopy whether it is transmission electron microscope or scanning electron microscope or by the nanoparticle tracking analysis uh, which counts the nanoparticle size and uh, uh, size and number uh, as well so here is an uh, picture which you are seeing from one of my paper uh, where you can see there is an electron microscopy uh, image and on the on the one of the side corner you can see that the dynamic light is scattering the dp the particle size right so why i do prefer that because i know that the dls can only tell me the size distribution in solvent without seeing the particle without seeing the physical structure of the particle right so it is just giving me a size distribution so it is essential to characterize nanoparticles with other techniques like electron microscope or nanoparticle tracking analysis to really determine its physical morphology therefore it is required to choose a technique which is principally correlate having principally correlative function uh, compared to the dls so if i can reproduce the data from the dls to the other techniques here like tm scm or nta that uh, that is required and let's understand how so uh, the data of number distribution principally matches with the size measurement of the electron microscope okay and electron microscope is an essential tool to, to see the physical morphology of the particles this and and tm measure the particle size displayed on the number of each size beam it means that the the measurement principle of the particle size uh, from the electron microscope to have the different size of particles or the part different particle size from the electron mic uh, electron microscope versus the dynamic light is scattering uh, through the number distribution is correlative they are same principally same the number size distribution and that's why you often see that your number distribution particle size is correlated with the electron microscope size data of course, uh, the number distribution is slightly higher. The particle size is slightly higher than the transmission electron microscope, but that is because of the hydrodynamic diameter, because it is in the solvent, there is a water layer on the top of that. But in, if you take intensity, it could be like way higher because it is just the sixth of the power, right? Uh, or if there is a more number concentration of the particles, if there is a coagulation, agglomeration like that. So you can see in this transmission electron microscope image and the DLS data in this particular paper presented here, you can see the, the matches uh, between uh, TEM image and the DLS. The second, this is also principally matches with the nanoparticle tracking analysis. This is an another technique uh, which basically measure the particles in the liquid or in the solid, but it take the picture and then they, it analyze the picture uh, photo of that particles. Uh, again, it's in physical seeing or observation and then analysis of the particles. So it is also number based matches. Okay, so that's an another reason because we can analyze the number distribution data and correlated with two different techniques. You can see the TEM, SEM, or nanoparticle tracking analysis. Further, number distribution is best suited for the particles smaller than 300 nanometer. And for those where my function are well known, if your particle size are less than 300 nanometer, the number distribution is best suited match with the particles measured by other techniques like NTA or TEM or SEM. 
and in nanotechnology we know that the by definition nanoparticles having particle size between 1 and 100 nanometer at least at one dimension is uh, typically called at nanomaterials and there is no intensity bias due to particles refractive index uh, what i says this is this point is important from the false uh, perception uh, coming from a small amount of particles uh, in an uh, in a in a sample let's say like you have 99 percent particles of one size and one percent particle of another size but when you get the graph you get all the data of one person and then because of its formula the sixth power basically gives all the assumptions that oh the particle size is so big uh, because your particle size in physical size is smaller than 300 nanometer or 100 nanometer and then you measure the intensity then it gives might gives the intensity bias so the number distribution eliminate that right because the more refractive particle the scatter the more light in the particle size distribution we know that it is weighted towards the more brightly scattered particle in the tls and this sometimes cause error in the samples with a mixture of materials, in particularly when your sample is coated, even when your sample is uncoated, but you have solvent, so there is always coating, right? There's a hydrodynamic layer on the physical shape of particles. And then loaded and unloaded sample, this is mainly for the carrier kind of particles like liposomes or any kind of material which can carry active ingredients, porous or non-porous particles, so in all cases, size distribution is weighted towards the larger or more refractile materials. So let's go for summary, which is the correct size, intensity, volume, number, or G. All four are correct, as long as it is clearly stated how the size was obtained and what distribution representation was considered in those conditions, OK? And then, why most people report on number distribution for nanoparticles? And in what conditions uh, we should report on number distribution of particles? Or why I report in my papers on number distributions? First, because I work with the particles having, most of the particles having size range between 1 and 100 nanometer every nanometer in case of nanomaterial synthesis and their application. So that number distribution shows me the number of particles in a particular size beam. Second thing, as we just discussed, DLS can only tell me the size distribution in solvent without seeing the particle's physical morphology. So for me to take the decision that what is my particle size, I need also to correlate the DLS data with the other techniques like electron microscopy. And the electron microscopy measures the particles shape and size, uh, specifically size distribution based on the number. So that's why I choose the number distribution to report the data. And then the other techniques, nanoparticle tracking analysis, that also take the picture and gives me the particles physical morphology. And that is again based on the number so I report the data based on the number. And then best suited for the particles is smaller than 300 nanometer and the my functions are well known. What is my function? You can just go on the Google and put the my function and then the role in the TLS, you will find it out. And then there is no intensity bias due to particle refractive index in case of number distribution. And these are the reason basically uh, drive me to uh, uh, measure the particle size uh, by the number distribution. I have not mentioned here XRD, but X-ray diffraction also analyze the, you can estimate the particle size uh, through the X-ray diffraction. And that is also principally based on the number distribution. So uh, I have chosen uh, to report my nanoparticle size by the number distribution and uh, along with the uh, supported analysis by the electron microscopy, by NTA or by XRD. With that, I would like to thank you. And I hope that this presentation clears the question uh, that which is the correct size 
uh, report right again all four are correct depends on where we want to use it if the particles are 500 nanometer 600 nanometer intensity distribution is great uh, if particles are smaller again and the number distribution is fine if you are comparing the mass then the volume distribution is great so i hope you like this presentation